Hello, my name is Shannon Nicole Kringen. I'm 43 years old and I live in Seattle, Washington, United States of America. And I wanted to do a video today about the aspect of borderline personality disorder. I've been doing video monologues for many, many years and I'm not sure if I've ever really talked really directly about this tendency because I don't like to label myself or anyone else fully, but due to recent very stressful situations I found myself in, I am revisiting this book that I got many, many years ago. When was it? 1990-something. This is called Skills Training Manual for Treating Borderline Personality Disorder, and it's by Marsha Linehan. Uh, I will say that borderline is not the same thing as bipolar. Uh, bipolar is when you're manic depressive and you go up and down in extremes, and I think that that's mostly a brain chemistry issue but I'm not sure about that. I'm not gonna talk about bipolar or manic depression or cyclothymia, which is rapid cycling. What I'm gonna talk about is borderline personality disorder, which is something that I have a tendency to have. Uh, I am a very highly functional borderline person. I am, okay, basically this is what borderline is. Borderline is you start off as a child and you're a highly sensitive person as a child. Some children are more sensitive than others. And when I say sensitive, I mean very much affected by what's outside of you. Like sensitive, meaning, I think some people think sensitive means that you're kind. No, sensitive means just that you're affected by things more intensely than someone less sensitive. And I'm not saying that being sensitive is superior or inferior to being insensitive. I'm just saying that when you're, when you're born and you're a child and you're sensitive, then however you're raised, whatever the pros and cons of how you were raised affect you really deeply. So basically, I was raised by two very sensitive parents, so all three of us were sensitive, and I was invalidated, meaning borderline people don't know how to validate themselves very well and part of the reason why is because as children they were invalidated by their relatives to some degree. So I got kind of a mix. I was raised by parents who were really sensitive and they kind of invalidated me sometimes without realizing it and then I learned to not trust myself. Like, like when you're not cold and a relative says, put on a sweater, you're, you're gonna get cold and then you say, well, I'm not cold. And then your relative says, you're gonna get cold, you're cold, put on your sweater. Then you think, oh, I guess I'm wrong. I guess I should put on my sweater. Maybe I shouldn't trust myself. You know, you sort of, that happens over and over and more extreme things than that. And then you learn to doubt yourself and then you learn to become at war with yourself. So it's a combination of being highly sensitive for instance, I don't know if you can hear that, but the Blue Angels airplanes are outside my window flying and they're really loud airplanes. And because I'm so sensitive, my stomach right now, I can feel adrenaline in my stomach. Those, oh my gosh, those airplanes are very loud out my window. They're rattling my windows. I do not like war planes. I know that the Blue Angels are not for war, but for instance, that's an example right there. I'm highly sensitive to that noise and it, I, part of me wants to run for cover and think that they're gonna bomb me you know because those same kind of planes are used in war so I don't really like that we celebrate those kind of planes so for instance right now I am like upset by hearing all of that and I have to try to tune that out I have to try to calm myself so part of being borderline what's what's cool about this is that this book is not about whining and being a victim of your problem. This book is about training yourself and building up skills that you didn't learn. Because when you're, when you're a sensitive person and you're really emotional and you don't have a lot of trust in yourself and your own emotions and your own valid feelings, you need to learn how, I need to learn basically how to validate myself. 
So when I'm when I'm with another person and there's a conflict and a disagreement that happens between me and that other person, I get really upset within myself and I and I react instead of agreeing to disagree with my friend. I tend to feel like I'm at war with myself and the other person and like like it's not okay for me to disagree with them. So part of part of the way to heal from having borderline tendencies and what happens when you have these borderline tendencies is that you usually develop self-destructive behaviors because you're pretty much at war with yourself and you don't know how to receive help from other people you want to push other people away and so you do these like relationship patterns of having chaotic relationships that end that don't last or you try to cling on to relationships that are really not healthy but you think that you don't want to be abandoned and so you cling on to something that isn't even good for you or you do the other extreme and then you sabotage and push people away that you could share a good loving relationship with and I've done both um, the good thing is is that a lot of borderline people have a tendency to want to cut themselves and I don't I've never had the urge to do that never I've never had the urge to cut myself like with a knife like ugh, I've never had the urge but I do mental things that are mean like I yell I literally yell at myself and I I have internal dialogue in my head that's very mean and combative and the paradox of healing from borderline is that in order to change you have to fully accept yourself as you are so what I work on doing is fully accepting myself as I am with all of my problems and my uh, neurotic tendencies and in a place of loving, forgiving, and accepting myself with all my flaws, then I'm relaxed enough so that I can try different things out. So in other words, if you try to make yourself change, if, you, if you're constantly if other people are constantly telling me I need to change because I'm dysfunctional, it's in a, in a borderline person such as me, it makes me want to rebel and react. And I feel like overly criticized by other people. And then I feel, you see, then it just reinforces, it invalidates me when people criticize me and tell me I need to change and then I want to rebel. So the way to heal from these these weird like borderline tendencies of being self-destructive and self-sabotaging is to actually forgive myself for being so screwed up and flawed and then ironically or paradoxically I'm in a space where I can relax enough to say oh what I'm doing is harmful and self-destructive I could do something else instead and then it becomes my choice and I'm empowered because I love myself enough to make a different choice. And so the, the, the borderline uh, skills training manual is how to learn how to regulate yourself emotionally. Because borderline people have a hard time regulating their emotions and they, they tend to feel, it's almost like being stuck in a childlike state of feeling like you need people around you. You know how little kids when they're doing something and they keep looking over at their mom to make sure everything's okay. It's like, oh, mommy, is everything okay? You know, and you're glancing over and you're wanting your mom to say, good job, yeah, you're good, you're, you know, you can, you can do it, you're, you know, cheering you on kind of a thing. It's almost like being stuck in a perpetual state of feeling like a little kid that needs, like, the parents or the adults around them to validate them and reassure them that everything's okay so that eventually they can go off and leave the nest and so it's almost like I'm 43 years old but on an emotional level it's like I've stayed around the age of nine I think on a certain level I don't know if you can hear that but the airplanes out my window are very loud and I'm, I'm having right now to practice a borderline skill which is to remain calm, to validate the fact that I don't like those loud airplanes, they stress me out, they upset my nervous system because I'm a sensitive person, and I know there's a lot of Americans out there who love those airplanes, and they're, that's valid for them, but for me, what's valid is I don't like those planes. They're loud, they're expensive, they make me think about war and violence, and that's sad. I don't like war, I don't like... So I'm having to practice a skill right now, which is self-soothing. 
and to validate my own self in my right to not like those airplanes. I don't like those airplanes. And some Americans do and I don't, and that's okay. Different opinions are okay. See, I have to learn to validate. I have to learn to forgive myself every day for, for all the mistakes that I make. I also need to learn to try to forgive other people. When I see somebody and they make a mistake, I tend to feel judgmental about that. So I have all these reactions to people. So I'm telling you this because borderline is basically borderline is a fragile sense of self. And I think why I developed the persona Goddess Kring, because for 15 years on public access TV, I did a show called Goddess Kring. And I would dance around nude with body paint and I would talk and do poetry. And that was like my other persona. It was my hero persona because I'm learning. I'm in, I'm in college right now, finishing my BA degree and studying psychology and spiritual studies and art and getting a BA in liberal studies. And I am learning that the flip side of victim is hero. And so I feel like ingeniously I created Goddess Kring as a way of trying to make myself become a hero to myself and to others, to be a positive, empowered person that's constructive and confident and powerful, as opposed to it's almost like the Wizard of Oz. The Goddess Kring is like the Wizard of Oz. And then Shannon is the little man behind the curtain, although I'm the little woman behind the curtain that feels kind of small and like, I wish I had more power. I wish I was more powerful because I sometimes feel dominated by other people. So because of some of the dynamics in my family, I suffered some neglect, some invalidation. There was a lot of divorce, moving around a lot. Uh, traumatic things happen. My grandfathers both died around the time I was born suddenly and it was very sad. So both my parents were grieving when they had me and I never met my grandfathers and both my grandmothers were a little bit cold and my parents are both sensitive people. In some ways they're wonderful and in some ways they didn't give me enough attention and they invalidated me a little bit here and there and then they nurtured me and so it's sort of inconsistent and chaotic. And so my way of coping, I think, was to kind of shut down emotionally. And so I've never really learned how to be really close friends with people. And my love life has been very rocky. So I'm doing this video just to talk a little bit about my, my experience with having a tendency towards borderline personality disorder. I don't really want to label myself, but I really think that this is empowering for me and hopefully if you're watching this maybe you're learning something from this. It's being highly sensitive, borderline is being highly sensitive and not knowing how to validate your own feelings so that you become easily confused around other people. Like I feel like I mostly do okay when I'm by myself. Although lately I've been upset even alone because I've been beating myself up for being a loner. Oh I'm a loner. I'm isolating. Sometimes I enjoy solitude. But when I'm isolating myself, I feel lonely and I feel like I'm avoiding other people because I'm afraid of trying to be close to other people. And I, I feel ashamed of my emotional needs. A lot of a borderline uh, tendency is to have this low self-esteem and this feeling, chronic feeling of emptiness and feeling like I don't deserve to be loved by other people and like I'm too needy so that I withdraw and I pull away. And I feel ashamed of the fact that I'm kind of childlike, even though I'm 43. So healing from borderline is learning. The, the healing comes from learning how to validate myself, know that my opinions are okay and that I am a good person just like everybody else. Everyone is a valid person. There's room for me in the world to have my opinions. You know, so to learn to validate myself and to learn to regulate my emotions to learn how to be strong. It's like I have to, I want to learn how to be interdependent with and close to other people, but also learn how to be more independent. So it's like a paradox, a juxtaposition kind of a thing where I'm learning to be more independent and empowered within myself and build up my self-esteem and validate myself, but also learn how to give and receive more intimately with other people. So I am currently single and trying to date people but the reality is because of my borderline tendencies and I tend to get really upset emotionally very easily, I don't really think I'm in a place where I can really have a good relationship with a man. Eventually, I would like to have a healthy, close relationship with a man that lasts, you know, long term. I would love to have a long term partner spouse in life. But so far, I haven't had that kind of relationship that felt safe and stable enough to even do that. So I want to 
heal and grow and I'm in school which is really helping me I love the structure of school that's one thing about a lot of borderline people can't even hold down a job um, for me I'm very highly functional I thrive on work and structure you know I've never missed a class and I've been going to school now for almost two years and I've never missed a class I always go to school um, I love modeling gigs for a living. I model for art classes and I love doing that and I show up and it's like I get paid to meditate. I get paid to sit still and they paint and draw and then I get paid. It's almost like I get paid to meditate. So figure modeling has been very good for me because it's quiet and I can be within myself and yet I'm around other people. So I'm feeling like I'm useful. I'm making money. I'm useful to other people and yet I get to to be quiet and still within myself so I'm not afraid and I'm not overstimulated. So modeling has been very good for me and so I kind of thrive on structure. So that's one really good thing about how I deal with my borderline tendencies is that I actually cling to the structure of school, work, uh, therapy appointments. I always go to my therapy appointment. I don't really flake out on stuff like that. And I've never attempted suicide. I've thought about it many times, but I've never attempted it because I always stay rational enough to know that that's not a good thing for me to do. It would make everything worse to harm myself in that way. So I've never tried that. I've just thought about it. And talking about it helps me not want to do it. If I talk about it and say, you know, I've thought about suicide a lot because I'm in so much pain a lot of the time and I have such a low self-esteem, I sometimes wish I could just not be here. But I don't really want to do that and I've never tried and I've never been in a psych hospital. And I'm not on any medication right now because I've tried some antidepressants and anti-anxiety and it didn't help me. So right now I'm working with nutrition, exercise, daily exercise to get endorphins in my brain, and also working on meditation, mindfulness, and skills training for borderline personality disorder. So learning how to regulate my emotions, learning how to validate myself, learning how to deal with, if I'm with another person and I'm like in a classroom setting where I go to college, it's a good place for me to practice these skills because I at the college I go to we have a lot of group discussions and each person is supposed to share what they really think and not argue if they disagree but respectfully say what you really think be honest about it and discuss it with other people and try to learn together and so this brings up a lot of issues for me of fear of trusting other people fear that other people are judging me because I generally have kind of unusual opinions and sometimes I'm the only one in the class that feels a certain way about something and I bring something up that's a little bit unusual and I'm learning to accept myself accept that maybe I just see things in an unusual way and the group maybe needs to hear what I have to say every single person in the group is there for a reason has something to share so I'm thinking I'm going to finish my bachelor's degree and then go on to get my master's degree in psychology and talk about the healing power of art because the other thing I was going to say is that figure modeling has been very good for me in dealing with my borderline. That's a good job for me. As well as my artwork. I, I have a tendency, I did the show Goddess Kring for many years on public access, and that's the way to build up my self-esteem. I'm trying to build up a sense of self, trying to feel like I'm a strong, powerful person. I'm Goddess Kring instead of just Shannon Kring and low self-esteem person. I am Goddess Kring. I am a powerful superhero kind of person my higher self and um, I take hundreds of photographs of myself and some people have accused me of being narcissistic and I think what it is is that I'm actually quite insecure and I'm trying to validate myself and bring a sense of self and know I really want to know who I am and know myself and I, I have a lot of talent for photography so I've created a lot of really beautiful self portraits and a lot of people enjoy them but the people who criticize me for it say that I'm narcissistic or they think that I'm trying to say I'm superior to other people. And really what I'm trying to do is try to feel equal. I'm trying to feel like I'm a powerful person who's contributing and equal to people. And I'm trying to validate myself. So I see it now as a form of self-therapy. When I do my art, it's a form of self-therapy. And if I do my master's, I am gonna design my own master's. A master's, an MA degree, a master's in psychology and I'm going to do a thesis about the healing power of art and how making art has been healing for me and that it can be healing for others as well. I don't want to be a therapist. I'm thinking I want to be a teacher. I want to teach 
creativity and how art can be healing. Making art can be healing and, and also the audience of the art can also get a healing effect from being around music, theater, dance, visual art, all the different kind of arts, visual and performing arts. So I'll have to continue this. So Shannon Kringen, goodbye for now.